from the blizzard of 2018 in beautiful New York City, where it's always a great day to go for a ride. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up, is it hot or is it not? We discuss the best and the worst of 2018 Pro Cycling Kits. Hmm, we also take a look at the Aussie and New Zealand road titles. We've got some fantastic hacks and bodges and the most interesting cycling news. Yeah, and brilliantly, Matt, we now also have help with pronouncing names like Nairo Quintana. All will be revealed later on. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that as the extreme cold weather hit North America, some cyclists have been practicing for alternative winter sports. Ben Deakin and Ollie Wilkins there. Not actually. Alejandro Valverde. Either way, they're utterly bonkers. Right, something warmer now. Turns out that we also learned this week that over the course of 2017, Zwifters worldwide produced enough power to keep the lights on in Los Angeles for 17 days Whoa, straight. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a lot of watts, isn't it? Yeah. Any idea how long you can keep the lights on in LA for? Probably not very long, really. No. Oh well. Anyway, the road cycling season is now officially upon us. It is. Woohoo! And that also means it's time for our annual fashion parade. That's right. Which teams have totally nailed their sartorial style? <laughs> And which teams have unfortunately missed the mark? Okay, let me get things underway. Now, they've not been hot, in my humble opinion, for about six or seven years now, but have AG2R improved things for 2018? I reckon marginally. Well, yeah, okay, it's a marginal improvement, but Matt, until Azure Desire actually changed their corporate colours from brown to something nicer, I think they're destined to be in the knot pile. Oh, yeah. Sorry, oh, yeah. Roma, yeah, but sorry. that's a knot. All right, then, another serial offender is the Ale Cipollini team. What are we thinking? Actually, an, on, upon closer inspection, that's an improvement. And that's saying something for that kit. It's not as bad as I remembered, actually. No. So, yeah, okay. Are we going to say hot? <laughs> hot? Yeah. Ale Cipollini oh, turned it turn around. For the books. It was indeed. Right, what about this? Long been one of my favourites. It's the Movistar team, but total redesign for 2018. Matt? I like it, but it loses a point for being virtually the same as the, Atan the, the Astana kit. Yeah, that light true. blue with the faded uh, navy blue at the bottom. But then they gain a point back for thankfully not having the yellow in the centre. True. And they also get another point for having a World Tour women's team as well. Absolutely, yeah. Now, interestingly, the Mobistar kit is our unofficial head of fashion, professional cyclist Adam Blind's yeah. favourite kit in 2018. And also, another little bit for you, we've got three pairs of their new physique shoes to give away later on. Yeah, but more on that later. Stay with us. Did we decide if the Astana kit was hot or not, Si? We didn't, but I think cruelly, it's not. Because Mobistar nicked their kit design and got a hot, and Astana got a not. Oh, well, there we go. I must admit, it's definitely a hot mob style there. It is. Right, okay, what about another team with men's and women's squads? It is the Mitchelton Scott team. Yeah, new kit, new, new name. It's a hot from me. It's a hot from me. I like that. Big thumbs up. And another team, who get a thumbs up straight away for having a World Tour women's team as well, is Lotto Sudo. They've subtly changed their kit a lot more white. It's a hot from me. Yeah, very Asian on a theme, but I yeah. like that. I do like it, mate. I do yeah, like distinctive, it. stands out in the peloton, yeah. Well, one team that now, ironically, perhaps, is whiter than white, it's Sky. Sorry, I like it. It's simple, it's classic, I like that kit. It's Grudgingly, Matt, yeah, I think I might have to agree. I think that is actually kind of hot. I think in the yeah. Spring Classics, Black Shorts, Belgian Roads, I think that is going to look quite hot, actually. So, so yeah. BMC, well, BMC's clothing sponsor, ASOS, have always gone for that like an asymmetric sort of design. Have, but yeah. the question here, They've got blue in the mix. They've got an additional sponsor in the form of a software company, Sophos. So it's challenging. It raises the question mark: Does the blue mix well enough with the kind of red and black? Well, it certainly doesn't mix well enough. And obviously, they've got the green of Tag Heuer, Heuer, yeah. Heuer to uh, throw in the mix there. But when you see someone like Greg Van Avermaet wearing it, that guy could look cool in anything. There he goes. Look. Add a bit of gold. Yeah, it's that's fine. that's the smile of a man who knows he can wear anything. Givenay. Takes it home. It's a hot from us. Ooh. 
Perhaps the biggest change in the professional peloton has been this one. The former Cannondale Drapac team going to EF Education First Drapac, presented by Cannondale team. We'd nearly run out of time for the show after that name. But no, that what a bold statement that kit is. Well, look at poor old Rigoberto Aran, he looks shell-shocked. He looks like he's just come out of a game of Mario Kart, doesn't he? Do you know what? I like it. It's I a like heart it. for me. It's a heart for it's me. It's brave. Unfortunately. Just to burst their bubble briefly, uh, GCN's unofficial head of fashion, right. Adam Blythe, actually said it's his least favourite yeah, kit in the pro panel. But what does he know? What does he know? Well, honestly. Has he still got a job with us after this? Absolutely dreadful. Not a chance on this earth I'd even go near it. Ooh, well now, Katusha Alperson have changed the top half of the kit from white to like an off blue. Like have a they? baby that blue white? powder. No, it, weirdly, is a very, very, very unusual Pantone. Don't know the name of the colour, but I would say it's like powder forward slash baby blue. Matt, can I say, that is a not from me. I think it looks like they're wearing the upholstery uh, from an Alfa Romeo Ooh, circa 1996. That's harsh, but I, it's a borderline kit, isn't it? Although, Alex is rocking it well. Uh, He's like Greg Van Avermaet, though. He oh could look God. good in anything. Come on, mate, say what you see. I like it, actually. What? Yes, yeah, a hot no, I like it. I do. Oh, it's brave. That's brave. <laughs> I don't want to wear brave. Now, now we're talking the Trek Drops team. Unequivocally, Classic. that is very cool. Very little has changed for 2018. Just the addition of the Trek logo on top of coming on board as title sponsor. But they haven't need to change that kit because it's it's fantastic. It just looks classy. Very it's cool a confident indeed. Confident kit, isn't it? Much like this, everyone's all-time favourite professional cycling team kit. It's the Canyon SRAM team. And they've gone kind of linear rather than diangular. Diangular. <laughs> No. <laughs> you still haven't recovered off. from that no, team launch, I have you? The rib's still a bit hurt a bit, but that kit, yeah, he, yeah. says it all, doesn't it? There we go, that is a big hot from us. Uh, now, make sure you let us know in the comments section which kit is your favourite yeah. for 2018, and of course, why, hot and not, we want to know about it. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. We'll start cycling shorts this week with a little update on the ban of e-bikes in New York. Now, it actually turns out that pedal assist e-bikes, so the kind of normal ones that you might see here or over on EMBN, are not included. It's just the throttle ones. So basically like an e-motorbike then, basically. So that is good news for e-bikers and good news for New Yorkers, I'd say, actually. Yeah, and good news for delivery drivers as well, because they're going to have to pedal, thus making them more fit. Yeah. Bad news though, for New Yorkers looking to pick up an e-bike bargain, you will now have to go to Sweden, as we talked about last week, become resident, and then get the 25% tax break. All right, well quickly back to the US for a moment, and a study by the Florida Institute for Transportation has shown that cyclists obey the law more than motorists, although it's just marginally, 3%. Well, a win's a win, Matt. A win is a win. Yeah, but that headline-grabbing stat, it actually shadows some pretty interesting information. Yeah, it was an interesting report, actually. So apparently younger cyclists are more likely to break the rules than older cyclists. 88% uh, of cyclists in total comply by the rules, uh, which seems like a pretty good amount. Uh, and then, interestingly, cyclists actually are more likely to break the rules and behave more aggressively when there's better visibility. So I wonder whether that's because... We, if we feel safer, we're a bit more like... Whoop. A bit of training added into the mix, that improved things by 5% as well. True, yeah. But Florida has still got quite a lot of work to be done because its fatality rate is three times the national average. That's pretty stark, yeah. that, isn't it? Now, I don't know about you, Matt, but I always think a segregated bike lane goes mm. a long way to helping. And back in the UK now, we might just be about to get a new one at a cost of £3 million. But, get this, it's going to be the longest cycle tunnel in the country at 1.4 miles. Now, to my mind, that sounds like a great wet weather training facility. You do 20 laps and boom, you've got nearly 60 miles in the back. That sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? It was actually used before it fell into disuse in the 1950s as a railway tunnel. But now they're thinking of demolishing it or redoing it. Each of the costs exactly the same. To me, mate, it's a no-brainer. That's right. So cyclists of West Yorkshire, keep your eyes peeled. Yeah. Your new wet weather facility may well be coming soon. Now, it's interesting, actually, what makes an area good for cycling. Because the author of the Copenhagenized blog, very famous blog about city cycling, has actually just poured quite a lot of scorn on Portland, USA, which is kind of like a hotbed for cycling over there after he spent six days in the city over the holiday period. According to Mikael Colville Anderson, he saw 26 cyclists over those six days. And in his words, even a half-assed cycling city like Oslo 
would do better than that. So apologies if I've just offended residents of Oslo in Norway, as well as Portland, Oregon. But there you go, doesn't mince his words, does he? No, it certainly doesn't. Well, not urban cycling now, but cycling fast. Now, a report in the International Journal for Computing in Sport. Uh, is one of my favourites, actually, Matt. I have seen you thumbing through your copy in the office. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in a report published, actually, by Wolf and, and Saw. A Wolf, or just a, Wolf and Saw? The wolf, wolf and Saw. Okay, it wasn't yeah. a Wolf, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> Introduced mathematical modelling to analyse the dynamics of a two-rider breakaway. And? The result? Yes. A 10% time efficiency over an individual rider. I would have thought it'd be more than that. I would have thought I'd be more than that, but once I saw that equation, those results, my mind was made up. Maths has proven us wrong. Do you know what we should do, Matt? We should do some science, and GCN should try and prove maths wrong. I think we should. Yeah, as a fool's errand, but there we go, anyway. As you know by now, we love Team Sunweb. We do. Okay, they've got a men's team. Yeah. They've got a women's team. Yeah. They've got a development team. We do. They've got results that far outweigh the sort of budget that they've got. Indeed. And now they've just announced a brand new internal anti-doping program. So the riders will have random tests, those results will be passed on to WADA and added to the riders' biological passports. I mean, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, it is a good thing, isn't it? I sometimes feel a little bit jaded about internal anti-doping programs, but, you know, having one is better than not having one. So, it certainly is. yeah, hats off Team Sunweb, doing the right thing there. Uh, now, another team I'm a big fan of, the Movistar team. Yeah, the Movistar team, I mean, they've become acutely aware over the last couple of years of our woeful inability to pronounce the riders' names. Any to, names, really. To, yeah, to, to such an extent, they've produced this. Yasha Sutelin. Rafa Weitz. Rachel Nalen. So we'll never need to pronounce or even say one of the riders' names again. Exactly. So this is how it's going to work. Nairo Quintana. Alejandro Valverde. Malgorzata Yasinska. Who? Sorry, hang on. Malgorzata Yasinska. All oh, right. Yeah. Right. It's time now for our weekly Chris Froome update. So... No news then? No, I don't think it has been anything this week, has no, it? No, it hasn't. No news this week. If you are interested in racing news, you want to know more, we have the GCN Racing News Show, actually. It's just launched. Lloydie took you through the first week, so do make sure you go and have a look at that. We'll, of course, link to it at the end of this video, as well as, in all likelihood, there being something up there for you to click on now. Mitchelton Scott's at Kelly Lear and started off 2018 in the same superb manner as it did in 2017 and in 2016 by taking out the men's elite criterion, aided by an extremely strong Mitchelton Scott team. And it was also three in a row for BMC's Rowan Dennis, who took the Australian Time Trial Championships as well. There was another hat trick in the women's time trial as well. Another hat trick? What do you call three hat tricks? Like triple hat trick? Hat trick, hat trick, hat trick? Maybe just a hat, hat, hat trick. Anyway, hat tricks aside, it was actually Katrin Garfu who took her third title in a row. Yeah, there was a surprise winner in the women's road race. Local rider Shannon Malseed took her first victory. Well, it was obviously her first victory because she's only been racing for a couple of years, which is mighty impressive. And uh, Mitchelton Scott added the men's elite road title to their criterion title with Alex Edmondson solo to victory there. Yeah, and there was a little bit of controversy in the New Zealand men's road nationals after the victor, Jason Christie, Rocked out a rather unorthodox victory salute, should we say. Go on, go on. Go well, he crossed the line and then he pulled out a, what can only be described as a reverse backhanded double bird flip uh, to his breakaway companions that he just out-sprinted. What the hell? Yeah, and what was weird, even weirder in fact than doing that in the first place, was that one of the guys he just threw the bird at was Hayden McCormick. Yeah, who controversially used a single bird flip at the finish of a big international race in the UK last year. So like a, a kind of mirror, kiwi, swear-off sort of scenario going on. Well, exactly. To me, Matt, it seems like there's a little bit of an attitude problem in the New Zealand men's peloton. When I mean, they're clearly passionate, they just need to dial the swearing back a little bit. Well, they do. Either that or just don't swear in a visual way. Just, just say it and then it won't get captured in a picture. Good tip. Come on! Come on, you f we gather that the men's time trial championships was won in an altogether more gentlemanly fashion. Uh, mm. Certainly there was no headline grabbing antics at the end. But interestingly, the winner, Hamish Bond, 
has undergone rather of a transformation over the last year, I think you could say. He certainly has, because Bond is more renowned for his prowess in a boat. Get this, he's eight-time world champion and a double gold medalist at the Coxless Pairs. Fair play. And get this, he's set his sights pretty high. The next Olympics, he, to, he wants to win at the individual time trial. Wow, so yeah. like a reverse Bradley Wiggins. But with better hair. Has he got better hair? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for hack forward slash bodge of the week. And first up, over on Instagram, we have this from Michael Albany. It's a rather fetching recycled sort of clock situation. It's actually well, yeah. What better use for some old sprockets and old chain rings than a clock? That's and I like your workshop too, Michael. Very, very neat, isn't it? Yeah. Very, very neat indeed. That's a hack right yeah, there. Definitely. Much like this one. Uh, oh, crikey. I'm going to mispronounce your name. Apologies now. Give it a go. Mella. That's not bad. Well, he might think so. Yeah. Uh, has built a bike stand for his bath. There we go. And. Uh, Dan's written this, by the way, in block capitals with a built-in chain keeper, which is unfortunate. But in this instance, actually, I can understand, and it does kind of make a bit of sense. I dread to think what your bath looks like at the end of it. I know. Nevertheless, I can't although saying that, it does keep a rather spotless bathroom. To be fair to him, and I'm liking the green bar tape as well. Yeah, that's and a great shout. That's a hack, I reckon, right there. Built-in chain keeper. Whoa, I, I, uh, there's a lot going on there, Matt. There, it doesn't appear, from what I can see, to be a seat. So they've used. Is that actually a bit of a wheel with a kind of inner tube wrap around it? It's I certainly part of the tyre. There's a car rear view mirror uh, mounted to the down tube, which uh, which is an odd place for <laughs> a mirror, uh, I'll grant you. And then also some touring handlebars that are backwards, so presumably preventing the owner of said bike to actually reach the brake levers. I'll try it, isn't it? Yeah, that's terrifying, that's isn't it? It's remarkable terrifying. what people uh, actually pedal around on. But, yeah. uh, inventive, inventive. Yeah, it's been pedaled around, so there we go. Uh, right, now this one. This is a perler. This is a perler. This actually is hack of the month right here. This is going to get a Topeak multi-tool sent out to you because we are so impressed by Just mm. Vervart. Uh, he has connected a fan to Zwift which responds to his pedaling input. Basically, the harder you ride, the more the fan blows. Technological wizardry, well, bar none. Yeah, so get in touch and we will uh, get your address off you and send out that Topeak multi-tool because that truly is hack of the month right there. Genius. Yeah, we've got to finally on uh, Hackle Boys, we've got this from Matt Gittings. Uh, quite happy with the way these turned out. So we, Oakley Radars with a look kind of theme. Look at that, like a nice. Mondrian theme to those I thought they were an actual kind of pair of glasses you could buy. That's a really nicely done, uh, yeah, everyone knows a bit of Mondrian in cycling, don't they? Very cool. Nice. Now, you said final Matt, we've actually got another one. Uh, this was shot close to our HQ in Bristol. Have a look at this poor chap. Oh! <laughs> oh, what is going <laughs> Oh, genius. Oh, I was just checking if he's got his helmet on back to front as well, yeah. but he thankfully got that the right way around. I mean, to be honest with you, mate, I've never sat on a saddle backwards, so he might be laughing at us because he's like, this is the most comfortable thing I've ever sat on. I mean, it looks to be, yeah, to be honest with you, it looks like he's got a relatively efficient position on a bike, just from the back there. there Maybe we he's go. discovered something that we didn't know. Make sure you keep your hacks and bodges coming in. We absolutely love them, as you can probably tell. Yeah. Uh, submit them on social media using the hashtag GCN hack. And remember, there is always that monthly prize up for grabs as well. I can't take my eyes off that one, side. <laughs> Stop looking at his bottom there. Remember earlier in the show, we said we're going to give away some Mobile Star Physique shoes. Oh, well, here they are in the flesh yet again, but we're not just going to give away one pair. Keep me in spirit with the hat trick theme of this week's show. We're going to give away not one, not two, but three pairs of these beautiful physique shoes. Yeah, Infinito R1s. Funny enough, the entire Movistar team is going to be using these. So that means the likes of Rachel Nalen and Nara Quintana, Alejandro Valverde. Calanda. Yeah, good job of getting help with the pronunciations. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Um, if you want to be in with a shout at joining those illustrious names and uh, being one of the three winners on GCN here, then make sure you click the link in the description beneath this video and that will take you through to the competition where you can get your name down. I think I might enter. These are brilliant. Aren't I love they? the fade on oh, there. That's, that's super a proper fade. Cool, just look at, just zoom in on that. Hang on a minute, I'll do it. All right, okay. Reverse zoom that one. There you go. Oof. Look at that. That's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's time now for caption competition where you get your chance to win a GCN Camelback water bottle. It's a very simple premise. We show you a photo, you caption it in the comment section down below. We pick the winner. And here, to illustrate the point, are the results of last week's show. This is your photo. 
Matt, do you want to do the honours? Okay, well the winner is Adam Pearson, uh, who said, you're only supposed to blow the bloody balls up. Now, not a lot of people know that. Adam, you are a lucky man that Matt can do a blinding Michael Caine impression, because that really Simon. brought your caption to life there. But anyway, congratulations, you get a GCN Camelback water bottle. Get in touch. Yeah, and uh, this one, to peruse and to kind of come up with a kind yeah. of snappy caption, it's, uh, oh, it's under Christoph, being pushed up a hill by uh, Dan Martin and Fabio Aru, new teammates for 2018. You want to start us off, sorry? Okay. Seriously, Alexander, those white shorts have got to go. You can do better than that. Yeah, you can. It's cracking over. Camelback yeah. ball, up for grabs. Get involved in the comment section down below. Time now for comment of the week. Sorry, you first up. All right then, first up, I like this one, Matt. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Peter Yagt uh, said, Matthew van der Poel, this very evening on Dutch television. This is under underneath Essential Cycle Cross Skills Obviously. video. If I don't fall during a race, then I have the feeling that I did not give my best. There that, you go, Matthew van der Poel legitimises crashing on your cycle cross bike. Yeah, so my log incident. You try pretty hard all the time, Matt. Just always trying like this. Yeah, and on the Tinkoff uh, training camp that time. Indeed, trying. And in that Belgian cycle cross race that time, always where you trying. tried really hard at least five times. Go karting, I was trying. Really hard. Yeah, anyway, we're going to run out of time here, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, uh, Underneath last week's show is this from Mark Lamorine. Uh, yeah, I never regret riding after going, but I often regret not going. Not that that helps me go the next time. Wise words. It's quite philosophical, though, isn't it? Mm. And then Coco Lores says, My resolution, drink more beer. It's a win-win resolution. Either reach my goal and increase my well-being, or I fail and probably do something for my health. Hard to argue with that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, yeah. There's nothing, there's no rules or anything about choosing a resolution that's easy to do, no. there? or fun. No, I think it's a very a, a, a very good point. Maybe it's we should well self-flagellate on January the no. 1st. No, I think we should just sort of relax a little bit. There we go. Anyway, yeah. should we have a look ahead to what's on the channel this week? Sorry. Let's do just that, Matt. Okay, Take well on, on Wednesday, we have four kind of key cyclocross drills to look into, if you're looking at riding cyclocross this season. Absolutely. On Thursday, five doping excuses. Some of these will blow your minds. They're absolute pearlers. They're really quite funny. And on Friday, it's Ask GCN Yep, yeah, Saturday, we've got another recipe. It's Vegan Power Porridge. VPP. That very same one. Uh, and then on Sunday, we have a look into the new phenomenon of 650B wheels. So mm. slightly smaller wheels. Do they make drop bar bikes more fun? Good question. Yeah. And then on Monday, it's the GCN Racing News Show, episode two, closely followed on Tuesday by the GCN Show, episode 262. So, uh, yeah, lagging behind a little bit, but it will catch up, won't it? Uh, uh, it, would, it would take a while, but oh, will it? From the sunny beaches of Ventura, California, welcome, welcome to, to the, the GCN, GCN Show. show. What? Uh, do make sure you subscribe to GCN if you don't already. It's very simple. Just click on the globe as modelled by Matt. Your one-stop shop for all things cycling. Now for another sort of one-stop shop for all things race to cycle racing, how about clicking just down here for our first ever GCN racing show? Absolutely. And then also we've got our first ever GCN tech news show. That one is just down there. My word, a lot of new things at the moment. Isn't it great? I love a new I know. Year. And a new sweater for you. Absolutely. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Big thumbs it? up all round, please.